This is a New Year picture every businessman must have in many parts of China for about 200 years. The main character in this picture, commonly known as the three living gods of fortune, stand for money, success, and influence. This is a series about one of the three in the picture. It's the story about the man on the far right. It's an iconic figure of the Kung family, which became synonymous with business success. This is the Kung Mansion in Gongyi, Hunan Province. Kung Su Chen, who is the 19th generation descendant of the Kung family, visits the 400-year-old courtyard for the first time in more than half a century. None of the Kung family members live here anymore. It's been turned into a tourist attraction. the doors, everything in this complex remind her of the times she spent here when she was a little girl. One of the things she remembered is a treasure cave deep inside her family's mansion. Inside the cave, there was gold, silver, and jewelry. Both the mansion and family's treasures are of great interest to the local authorities. this is the place Kung talks about. It's in an unimpressive corner of the mansion. If one didn't look for it deliberately, you might never notice it. Is it a treasure cave? Experts had their doubts. But due to Kung's insistence, they decided to explore it. <laughs> This is an underground maze that is by no means inferior to the buildings above ground. It has many twists and turns and is quite spacious. It even has removable partitions. Unfortunately, no gold, silver, or jewelry was found as they hoped. It was empty. These enigmatic passageways show the Kung family's wisdom. What happened to the treasure Kung had seen when she was a kid? A stone grinding base that is common in villages in northern China sits at the top of the mountain behind the mansion. 
The place where it sits was once the fortress of the mansion. As the exit of the cave, maybe only it knows where the treasure went. Beneath it is the building complex of the mansion. Covering an area of 64,300 square meters, the mansion is 2,000 square meters larger than Prince Gong's mansion in Beijing. It has 33 courtyards, 53 storied buildings, 1,300 rooms, and 73 cave houses. With high walls on all four sides and well-arranged courtyards, it was a small community. The large-scale building complex symbolizes great fortune. Who built this mansion? Kang Bai Wan is the family's name. But to be exactly said, the family is the family. He said the family is 为家族发展做出重大贡献的这经营的通程这康阳从这个第六代康寿晋开始一直到这个十八代康庭南经历了明清民国三个时期连负了四百多年In the 16th century, a young man named Kang Xiaojing sailed downstream from his hometown Gongyi to Weisha. It wasn't a great distance. He served as an assistant officer in a local courier station in Weisha. After studying hard for several years, he passed the imperial examinations and was selected for the post. Though he was just a minor officer, he had a great vision for the future. He never expected that this trip would be the stuff of legend in the future. Uh, 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 During the time of Kung Xiaojing, commercial distribution began to thrive. Most historians believe that the period around the year 1500 was an important watershed in human history. In the West, with the great geographical discovery by Columbus and the opening of the new sea route, Westerners began to explore the entire world. The frequent exchanges of commodities and cultures brought about an unprecedented business boom throughout the world. In the East, the seeds of capitalism sprouted and merchants' influence on society grew. All this provided fertile soil for business development. The 美洲的黄金白银能大量的运到了中国。为什么会运到中国呢？就是为了平衡灯西方的这个贸易。我们中国生产的像丝绸、陶瓷、棉布、茶叶等等，大量的销往这个西方。当时呢，很多人已经呢
呃脱离了农业生产，而转为啊呃从事工商业，比如说呃在棉纺业这个领域中呢，呃棉布的产量啊当时非常高，呃有一个资料显示呢，棉布的产量有百分之五十二左右呢，都以商品的形式啊投放市场。Kung Shao Jing was a sixth-generation descendant of the Kung family. In the early Ming Dynasty, his ancestors came from Shanxi Province to Henan Province. They made a living by running inns. He could easily adapt to the complex environment at the courier station and had well-developed interpersonal skills. He was soon promoted to the post of manager in Dongcheng, Shandong Province. He was a Dongcheng Fu Master. This country was built for the Dongcheng Fu. He was built for the Dongcheng Fu. He was built for the Dongcheng Fu. 是个住士，下边住士下边具体管的就是大事。这个仓是国国国仓啊，这仓里边不是光仓粮食的。皇帝呢，你看他仓分了很多种类，大仓里边分了很多种类，包括这皇帝的衣食，这些一切的消费，啊，甚至包括他玩的东西都有。因为他掌握了呃重要的有关经济、交通、呃和盐运呐、海运呐。河运方面的这个职务，所以呢，位置是非常重要的。Dongcheng was today's city of Liaocheng in Shandong Province. It's at the confluence of the Grand Canal and the Yellow River. All the ships that came and went had to pass through it. During the Ming and Qing dynasties, its economy boomed as it benefited from the thriving transportation along the Grand Canal. When it was a good thing, it was a good thing. Why did it come? Because it was very important. It was very important. It was very important. The experience he gained in Dongcheng broadened Kung's horizons. A large group of merchants who wanted to expand overseas trade gathered here. Influenced by Zheng He's voyage to the Western Oceans, many countries established commercial and trade relationships with the Ming Empire. Thus, the private overseas trade that had previously been regarded as smuggling became legal. Dongcheng was an important transfer station for overseas trade and harbored several hundred cargo ships. Kung witnessed the prosperity here and made friends with many merchants engaged in overseas trade, including Wang Zhe, a famous Anhui merchant. Wang Zhe is an Anhui merchant. He first started his business in manufacturing cloth. After that, he suffered a backlash from this point. 他就转而到了东南沿海一带啊，呃，从事就是海上的走私贸易，形成了一种势力，也取得了同日本之间的这个海上贸易的垄断地位。那么以后呢，随着他势力的增强啊，像其他一些呃海上走私的或者从事海外贸易的一些呃商人呢、啊，往往要投到他的名下。打着他的旗号呢，才能够啊来从事这个运输。Wang was the pioneer of the influential Anhui merchants. From his contact with Wang, Kung gained a new understanding of business and realized that commercial distribution was important to business development. Soon, a golden opportunity presented itself to him. After the founding of the Ming Dynasty, the empire set up nine towns for frontier defense along the Great Wall, from Shanghai Pass in the east 
to Jiayu Pass in the west. 800,000 soldiers were stationed at these locations at great financial cost. 那么当时的驻军呢，有好几十万之多。那么这么多的人，他们的这个吃饭、喂马的草料等等，是需要每天都要解决的。可是北方延边地区啊，经济往往又比较落后，那么生产不了那么多的这个粮食和草料，所以呢，政府就采取了一个办法，就是由商人来向政府啊，向当地驻军来交纳这个粮草。可是商人不可能是办这个。赔本的买卖，哎，那么拿什么东西来去交换这些粮草呢？就是拿盐。Salt was important to the whole country, second only in importance to grain. Since salt was a necessity of life, which was only produced in limited areas. All dynasties adopted a salt monopoly system. This made salt a lucrative commodity. The national tax revenue depended largely on salt revenue. In the Ming Dynasty, the salt tax was even more important than the farming tax. Usually, one salt license could be exchanged for about 100 kilograms of salt. Many merchants obtain salt licenses through this policy and gain the opportunity to trade salt legally. Trading salt was lucrative and its profits quite high. Kang was immediately inspired by the opportunities it presented. Thank you. 就是官方垄断的一种物资，那么通过实施开征法，等于说间接的把盐这个重要的物资啊，由商人呢、啊，他可以参与到这个过程中，并且呢，呃，具有一定的这个支配权。Kang had another advantage. His hometown was near the Law River, a tributary in the lower reaches of the Yellow River. It had sufficient water resources, and its river basin was fertile and densely populated. Its waterway transportation had a long storied history. What's more, the banks of the Law River were the main production area for grain. Because of the unique geographical situation and Kung's keen commercial awareness, Kung family's business began to develop. They were engaged in the waterway transport business on the Law River. This is how they obtained their salt license. Then they transported salt from Shandong to Hanan and grain and cotton from Hanan to Shandong. Soon, the Kung family began to amass a large amount of wealth. Kung's experience in Shandong had a direct influence on the development of his family's business, and Shandong became the base of the Kung family's business. In 
In fact, not only the Kung family, but also many merchants, like the Shanxi merchants. Shanxi merchants and Zhejiang merchants all benefited from the salt license system. Tobiashin 比如說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,你說,